And finally, we're back with episode three of Discuss, Review and Cover, uh, or DRC for short. So the song is Heya, um, specifically the acoustic version made famous by Obadiah Parker, not so much the Outcast version, but I will talk about that. Just a side note, I was going to go over this song as part of episode four, but uh, as I'm borrowing this, from my bus. Uh, since December, I've moved this one ahead. So, when Outkast released this song back in 2003, um, my first thought was, oh, Outkast are back. Um, I don't know if they've gone anywhere, but it seemed like a long time since I heard Miss Jackson, which was a song that um, you know I listened to a bit when it came out, but then by the time Heya had come out, I'd moved on from being this agnostic rock musician to very much a, just a classic rock guy and so if a song didn't feature a guitar solo or screaming or some kind of heavy metal breakdown, I wasn't interested. So for the longest time I wrote this song off completely. Fast forward to about 2009 and the sitcom Scrubs has been played on repeat nearly as much as Friends on Channel 4 and E4 and T4 and whatever, all the fours. Whether you were like me and you tried getting in early and then sort of lost track of it and came back to it later or you know um, you weren't that interested in it in the first place but you were watching a lot of daytime TV around that time, chances are you'd end up following the plot and watching the whole series through to the end. And in doing so, you would get to uh, an episode near the end of the entire series, which was set in the Bahamas. Scrubs was a sitcom that had as much to do with relationship drama as it did about life in a hospital. And this particular episode I'm referring to had nothing to do with uh, medicine, but was kind of a resolution point to a lot of the um, you know, relationship issues that the main characters had throughout the whole series. And providing the soundtrack to this happy ending is a sunburned Ted, or as Dr. Perry Cox calls him, The Hospital Sad Sack, singing a melancholic love song with an acoustic guitar. It was only when he got to the chorus that I realised no, what he was singing was indeed Heya, or at least a more soulful rendition of the song that I had ignored years prior. A few more years pass, and I trace this acoustic version that Ted was singing to a band called Obadiah Parker, um, who had made it famous in about 2006. So it kind of was one of those early YouTube videos that went viral. Like a lot of things that go viral, I missed this completely. As I did uh, last year, when Outkast actually made a meme of this song, um, that made it sort of come back into people's consciousness again when they realised that the lyrics were actually a lot sadder than they had previously thought. I disagree with this meme. Um, and on the grounds of it being the saddest song ever written, but I do agree with the top bit, it is a bop. By the time this meme came out, I already knew the lyrics pretty well, and uh, regardless which version you're listening to, it's quite soulfully sung, so that should be your first clue that it's a sad song. There's, there's all kinds of tricks in the acoustic version, like um, Obadiah Parker goes, na, 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 just things like that. It's very. Um, there's a lot of nuance to the way it's sung, which is kind of a, a soulful grab, you know, and that's generally associated with sad songs in my opinion. So to review, okay, as a folky pop song based on an R&B song, this song would not usually be on my radar, but because obviously I discovered it for a sitcom that I was watching, this catchy soulful delivery of those very accessible and um, relevant lyrics was undeniable. There were two aspects of Heya which really sort of draw me to it, if I'm honest. Um, the emotional delivery of the lyrics is obviously one, and the other one is actually some of the tricks that are used in the songwriter, which if you have looked into the song at all, you will know all about. So I'll address a little bit more about the vocal and the lyrics. It's still surprising to me that people might not have picked up on 
what the lyrics were based on the way it's sung. That said, I guess I never noticed myself before I actually became interested in the song. The thing is, songs that are sung with those kind of vocal lines are very rarely happy songs. It's usually something associated with soul and blues. Um, regardless what the music behind it is doing. And maybe that's what's actually going on because Outkast's version is very lively and catchy. Part of that catchiness, I think, hangs on the song's meter and chord progression. Every phrase in this song, or every line, or every uh, run through the chords, whatever you want to measure it in, is played over five and a half bars of 4-4. Four, four. More specifically, there are three bars of 4-4, four, four, then there's half a bar of 4-4, four, four, so one bar of 2-4, and then two more bars of 4-4 four, four timing. It's a really clever trick that it's hiding in plain sight, really. Um, one that you're not really noticing unless you're sort of counting along. It adds a shift that prevents the line of each song from running a bit too long, but also not feeling rushed and you know it, it keeps the it allows for like that faster beat rather than having to do a you know a four four straight. Like I say, it's something that if you've looked at the music of Hey Ya, you will have seen people on the internet talking about it at length sometimes incorrectly labeling it as 11-4 or whatever um, but nonetheless it's tight and it's subtle it even got attention from classic fm of all places and it be does become an intriguing thing to listen to once you once you know about it you, you're very focused in on it additionally the chord progression actually has a little trick going on it has a deceptive cadence so you know, it starts on the, on the tonic, moves to the fifth, nope, so it moves to the fourth, and then goes to the fifth, and then you would normally take it back to the tonic, but then you move to the sixth, and, and so it kind of goes up before launching back to the tonic at the beginning of the next phrase. Again, this is very musically minded stuff, which is not something you'd expect from Outkast, or, or from, from R&B and hip hop, but it's skillfully done. Again, it's not overplayed. It's only something you really notice when you're looking into the music and it's really subtle. So if you've seen my other DRC videos, um, you know that I give, before I do the cover, I give each song a rating out of 10. I think Hey Ya, for me, has to be an eight. And again, I'm talking about specifically the acoustic version made famous by Obadiah Parker. I think with its lyrics, its unsung writing techniques, and it's emotional delivery. Hey Ya is probably one of the best uh, pop songs the 21st century has had to offer. It's not really a style of music I listen to. Really, either version is not a style I listen to um, specifically. Folk pop or R&B, especially not R&B. But then again, regardless which version I'm listening to, I will often find myself singing along to it. Sometimes I'll even sing the line, shake it like a Polaroid picture out loud but uh, I won't be doing that today. My baby don't mess around because she loves me so and this I know for sure but does she really want a buck and stand to see me walk out that door? And stand, I fight the feeling cause the thought alone is killing me right now. Thank God for mom and dad for sticking to together cause we don't know how. And hey, I Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. Think you got it? Oh, you think you got it? But darling, you don't get it till there's nothing at all. 
get together, oh we get together But Sepper's always better when there's feelings involved What we say is not nothing that's forever Then what makes, and what makes her love the exception So why oh why oh why oh why oh why oh Are we so in denial when we know we're not happy here And hey ya uh, Hey, yeah. hey.